Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share the April 2024 block of the month. I'm really excited about this month's block because it in actually introduces a new technique that some of you might struggle with or might not have even seen before. And I'm also going to show you two methods to make this unit. It's sometimes referred to as a cat's cradle unit. I've got the method in my pattern, but then I also have a an amazing Creative Grids specialty ruler that I'm gonna to demonstrate to show you how to make the block unit using that ruler. So let's go ahead and get started with the April block of the month. Okay, and just one thing I wanted to share before I get started with this month's block tutorial. I have had a lot of people email me. They actually want to make their outer star points in the same colors that I'm using. And I know it's, I've been telling everyone it's a mystery block of the month, so I can't share the middle, but I am on my blog. If you go to the blog, I'm going to have a diagram of the quilt with just the outer stars so that you can see which fabrics I'm using for all those star points because uh, I know a lot of you want to make those outer star points now and get them all done but you're just waiting on what colors I'm going to use so I will have that image on the blog and you can click on it and it will enlarge and you can so you can see which fabrics I'm going to use okay now we'll get started with talking a little bit about this month's block. Okay, so let's talk about the April block of the month. As I mentioned before, if you're new here, just finding out about this, the directions for the outer star points are in the January pattern. So remember that you'll have to go back to that January pattern for these outer units. And then each month I share the directions for the center unit. This month has two super simple units, which are just two squares and two half square triangles. So we've got one of those units here and one of those units here. But then this month's block also has another unit. And I don't know all of the names for this unit. I always know it by cat's cradle unit. And so it is one unit that is made up of a square, two small triangles, and then a large triangle. And we do have two of those units in this block. And so you can see in the small block, the pieces are, are pretty small. Same exact thing. I'm gonna show the pressing and looks like I did it pretty much the same. So I pressed my half square triangles open. I flipped this seam in my four patch and that, brought it to where the fabrics were on this dark part. So did that. And then for the cat's cradle unit, you'll see that the square is pressed out toward the light triangles. And then also that center seam is pressed toward the, the darker triangle. And it's the same, everything's the same here. Okay, so let's talk about the cat's cradle unit. This is what the cat's cradle unit looks like by itself when it's not sitting in the quilt block. I guess I could turn it the same direction as that. Okay, and so on your pattern, first I'm gonna talk about how my pattern shows you how to make this. And this is the traditional method for making this block. For one of these units, you would actually have a square and then you would have a another square for the small triangles and then a larger square. So really this, is everything that you need to make this. And it actually gives you the triangle that you'll need to make the second unit. So let me explain how we do this. So the square is going to stay as it is. The, the background fabric, you are going to actually cut that in half diagonally once. And that will give you two triangles like that okay so once you cut this 
this square in half diagonally once, it will give you that. And then the same thing, when you cut this larger square, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to cut it in half diagonally once, and it will give you these two triangles. And you'll use one for each unit. For the second unit, you'll need an additional square and an additional background square for those other pieces. Okay, so the way that you sew this together and the directions are in the pattern, you will first sew a one of your triangles to the background square like this. And the way I do it is I line these up right sides together and I start sewing from this end, not from the end where the triangle is overlapping the square. It, it makes it too difficult, maybe some machines that might bunch up or whatever. So I always start from this side and sew my quarter inch seam and then press out toward the triangle. And then after you've done that, you're actually going to do the same thing. You're going to add a, the second triangle, right sides together. And you're gonna notice that this is sticking out. You can actually trim that off before you sew or after, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you're going to sew a quarter inch seam right there. And again, I always start sewing up where, where it's just nice and even. And so that will give you this unit like this. So you've, we've taken our square and we've sewn our two triangles to it. And so we've come up with this unit. And then the final step is just to add the, the other triangle that we've already cut from the square. And I do actually, I do like to cut this off first and just get rid of it so it's not in the way. And then I will put these right sides together and they should match up pretty, pretty close, which they do. And when I'm sewing these, you're actually gonna want to sew from this side. And the reason for that is that that way you can avoid crossing this intersection on the square fabric where the two triangles were sewn. Because if you do that, it will, cut off your point and if it's sewn too far over you won't have a perfect square point so you really want to make sure that you don't cross that seam that you sew inside towards the the edge of the triangles so you're going to sew that and it's going to give you your unit and then the pattern has you trimming it there are two different sizes that you trim it to for the small block and for the large block. And I believe the small one is you trim it to two and a half inches. Okay, so that is the traditional way. And sometimes it's, it's difficult for people to get this to come out okay. I feel like it's because you are working with these triangles and there's bias. And so if you stretch them or have to unpick it and re-sew it, it's just sometimes difficult to get these units really the way they want to be. So enter the cat's cradle ruler by Creative Grids. And I have actually had this ruler in my collection for a little bit embarrassed to say this, but I had it for a couple of years without ever using it. And I was actually with my friend Val back in January and she was using this ruler to make some units for a quilt. And she said, hey, did you ever? And she knew I had the ruler. And she said, "Did you have you ever played around with that cat's cradle ruler? And I said, you know, I really have it. And she said, here, let me show you really quickly. And she gave me a quick tutorial and I was like, wow, that is really neat. But at the time, it didn't even dawn on me that I had this unit in my block of the month that I had already designed. And so when I set out to start sewing this a few weeks ago, I remembered the ruler. And so I'm gonna show you how the ruler works. And I really do love the ruler because you can make six different sizes of these cat's cradle units with one ruler. So I love a ruler where you don't have to buy a new ruler for every size that you wanna make. So it goes all the way from one and a half inches finished all the way to four inches finished. And four inches finished just actually happened to be the size we need for our large block. And two inches finished just happened to be the size that we need for our smaller block. So I was able to use this ruler 
for making both of my units. And so now I'm just gonna give you a quick little demo of how you use the cat's cradle ruler to make your cat's cradle block and you don't have to cut any triangles. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull this photo board up so that you can hopefully see the lines a little bit better on the ruler. And one thing I love about about Creative Grids rulers is that they do come with full instructions and they also have a QR code that you can scan and you can see a demo online. So love that too. Okay, so the ruler will actually tell you what size to cut your all of your pieces. And I've got those already cut, let me pull those out. Okay, so there is a chart on the Cat's Cradle ruler that tells you what size to cut your squares and your rectangles. And that chart is according to the size of your finished block. So you're going to cut two squares, two small rectangles, and one large rectangle. And so just to make it a little bit more easy, I'm, I'm demonstrating the, this unit right here. So the two squares are going to be for the square that you're gonna use. The two smaller rectangles will end up making your small triangles, and the large rectangle will make your two large triangles. And this method will actually make two at a time. So by doing this, we will be making both of these units at the same time. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to sew the two squares and the two small rectangles together. So we're gonna put those together, right sides together. And we're going to sew a one quarter inch seam. And then we're going to press toward the rectangle. And I'll be right back to show you that. Okay, so I've sewn the squares to the rectangles and you press toward the rectangle in both cases. Now we're gonna put them on top of each other with the squares on opposite sides. So a little bit different than what you might think. And we're gonna go sew a one quarter inch seam here. And I'm gonna actually come back because there's a step that we do before we press, but after we sew. So I'm gonna just go sew this quick seam and be right back. Okay, I've sewn that seam. Now there is a little step that we're going to do before we press, and that is we're going to find the, the middle of our block and we're going to clip with our scissors, make a small slit right up to the thread where we were sewing, but not over it. We don't wanna cut through the seam at all. So I'm gonna measure my block. So for this one, I'm gonna to go to the three inch mark is going to be the middle. And I'm actually just gonna keep my ruler right there, make a little clip. And then I'm going to clip it all the way to the seam, but not through the seam. Okay, so this is gonna allow us to press in different directions. And so we are going to, again, remember the first time we pressed our seams toward the rectangles, we're going to again press toward the rectangles. So this one, this part of the seam is gonna go there, and this part of the seam is gonna go there. And I'll go do that and be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've pressed both of the seams toward the rectangles, and now we're ready for the next step. At this point, we're actually going to use our ruler and we're going to draw a couple lines. And you're going to actually do this on the wrong side of the unit. And there is a little square here with two lines that say place on seam line. And we're gonna line those up on the stitch lines of the squares. And by stitch lines, that's where my thread actually is. So we're gonna put those right there and it should, regardless of which size square you have, it will work. I'm actually using the largest unit for this ruler. So I'm gonna line those up and you can see that these dotted lines also line up 
with the other remaining sides. And we're going to draw a line now. Just very lightly along the back. And then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing again. Okay. And then I'm going to draw that second line. Okay. So these are actually going to be our stitching lines. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on top of that large rectangle that you cut and you'll find that it is exactly the size that it needs to be. And we're gonna go stitch on both of these lines. And after we do that, we are going to cut a quarter of an inch away and press. And when we press, we're going to actually press out toward the, the green fabric. But I'll go stitch these lines and come back and show you the next steps. Okay, so now you can see I've sewn right on those two pencil lines that I drew and it went right through the intersection of the square there. So we're gonna have a nice crisp point. You can kind of see how this is coming together now, how we're making two of these units at the same time and we're gonna have these perfect points. So the next thing that we do is we're going to cut in between our lines of sewing, but really, a lot of times when I have things like this, I won't worry about it, but with this, I feel like you don't want more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance with either one of your units. So I am actually going to use a, a ruler to trim. And so I'm gonna line the quarter inch line with the line that I sewed. I'm gonna trim that side. And then I'm actually gonna do a, again with the ruler. I know that it doesn't seem like a lot, but you don't want any more bulk in your seam that you, than you need to have. So it's just gonna be a sliver that gets trimmed off, but at least that's not gonna be, that's fabric we definitely don't need in our quilt block. Okay, so then we've got two units that look like this. You can see we've just got that perfect point. Another one. And I'm gonna go press both of these toward the green, and then I'm gonna come back and show you because then we actually trim this down to the exact perfect size. So I'll go press and I'll come back and show you that final trimming. Okay, so I'm back and they've both been pressed, but now we're going to use the ruler to do a final trimming. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to place the dash diagonal line on our seam line and we're going to also at the same time we're going to make sure that the black solid square is matched up with our square so so these are the squares and it ours is the largest we did the four inch finished block so we've got this diagonal line on our seam line and then we've also made sure that the outside edges of the square are along the outside edges of our square. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna trim two sides at a time. And then we're actually going to turn it so that we can trim our other two sides Okay, now we're going to do our second trim to trim the remaining two sides. You'll notice that there's quite a bit of extra fabric on each of these parts of the block. So we're gonna lay the ruler, place the ruler on the block and make sure that this diagonal line goes through the square and that again, that outer line, cause I'm, I'm doing the, the largest size. So if you were doing a smaller size, it would depend on which side you were doing which size you were doing, which one of these lines you would use. But I'm gonna make sure that this diagonal line goes right through my square and that that same line there. And you can tell then that I'm going to trim these remaining two sides and I've got this perfect unit. So I'm gonna actually trim the other one again for you just so you can watch it all again. And so first, the first trim is with the square up here matching with the lines and then also matching that diagonal line. 
And so again, two sides. And then I'm going to flip it. And then again, making sure that diagonal line goes through the square and that we've got this dotted line matching with our seam right there. And there we have it. And so they've both been trimmed and we've made them both at the same time. So again, really phenomenal ruler. If you have a quilt that has a lot of these units, I highly recommend it. I'm definitely going to be using it. I feel like almost all of the blocks that I make are going to use one of these six sizes. So it's a really versatile ruler and it will definitely make this sewing these units a lot easier because you are never working with triangles. Okay, so that's it for the April 2024 block of the month. I think it's a really fun block. I, I love how mine turned out in both of my colorways. And I hope you enjoy making this block, whether you use the traditional method or whether you go out and get this amazing ruler. Either way, you can make the block with or without the ruler, but I think you're gonna like the ruler. We will have everything linked in the description, the link for the pattern. You can head over to my blog for that. And then we'll also have the ruler linked. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.